بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنك لا تنادي فهم يا بني قومي أسودا أعيد للدنا أمجاد عصر وكل بالحديد لنا القيود Let not the believer take the believers out not to take the hypocrites عبد الله ابن أبي uh, and his companion and the disbeliever look who's, who are they the Jewish for their friends so as to become mighty and honorable in preference to the believers who are sincere whose uh, doth that seeking might and honor by taking the hypocrites and the disbelievers the same verse taken clearly about not to take the Christians and the Jew as a, and as a friend because if you do so Allah will take his mercy and his protection and your honor even which means you will be killed you cannot do it O oh, you who believe do not take Jews and Christians as patrons affiliating with them or showing them affection they are patrons of each other being united in disbelief Whoever amongst you affiliates with them, he is one of them, counted with them. God does not guide the folk who do wrong, by affiliating with disbelievers. يا أيها الذين آمنوا لا تتخذوا اليهود والنصارى أولياء بعضهم أولياء بعض ومن يتولهم منكم فإنه منهم إن الله لا يهدي القوم الظالمين You who have believed, do not take the Jews and the Christians as allies. They are in fact, allies of one another. And whoever is an ally to them among you, then indeed, he is one, of them. Indeed, Allah guides not the wrongdoing people. You should not take Jews and Christians for friends. There is a big mistake here in translation to start with. The Arabic term used in that verse is not friendship, it is to look up to them for protection. And if you look carefully at the verses where it prohibits Muslims from doing that, it is because of negative reasons, including that they mocked your religion. Who in the world in his right mind would go to some, not all, some individuals who mock their faith and say, I would like to make alliance for you 
to protect. It says a Muslim can get married to a Jewish woman or a Christian woman. If indeed they have to fight, I'm not talking about family fights, real fights with blood, how does the Quran allow even marriage which is a more intimate type of relationship? And after all say it is not because of your wishful thinking or that of the people of the book. Anyone who does wrong will be punished accordingly. So the question of judging people, I said that outright. I said, yes, there are things in the Quran that say what is right and what is wrong in belief and others. But it's not up to us to mistreat people or hate them. The Quran uses the term oftentimes about the brotherhood, even, even though people might not agree with you. The Prophet of Islam he is saying it clearly, don't initiate the salam to the Jewish and the Christian. The thing that he referred to in hadith, and this is only one example to show the ki kind of understanding also of the context of that hadith. So more than once he referred to the Prophet uh, quoted as saying don't uh, uh, begin greeting of Jews and Christians. Does he know, Mr. Safa, the background of this? The background is already in the books of Tafsir that some people among the people of the book, Jews in particular, in Medina, when they came to greet the Prophet, they twisted the word as salam into another Arabic word, Assam, which means instead of peace be with you, death be with you. And the Quran in one verse actually say, when they come to you, they greet you in a way not greeted to by God. So what the Prophet basically told, because he didn't want to come to the level and tell a death with you too. And they twist the word so it sounds like peace be with you. So he said, all right, for them, not for all Jews and Christians, all the time, everywhere. He said for those particular people, if they don't initiate greeting with them, they showed arrogance, they showed assault, unfair assault on Muslims and the Prophet. But if they greet, so if they greet you, say, on you too. So if they say, peace be with you, you're saying, you too. If they say, death be with you, you're saying, you too. So you're not trying to just <laughs> dealing with them on uh, a level uh, ground. a reason even not to take them their uh, uh, you know supporter why insult Jesus in the Talmud and slander his mother no wonder this hypocrite liar and his likes do not hesitate to declare their supporting to the Zionists as he is not a true Christian but after the state of Israel established you know now the hate point target Israel because now Israel is a huge risk for them so, you know, for us as a Christians, we should support Israel. Even if you don't believe, you believe in Israel or not. This is not an option. You know, I support... Believers in the unity of God should not look towards those that do not believe in Him for help and comfort over their own fellow men. They are more likely to combine together against rather than helping us. This happened more than once in the lifetime of the Prophet and is often repeated again and again in the after ages. Whenever Muslims became weak as a community and fought amongst themselves, most of these men usually align whichever way the wheels of fortune turns. Muslim communities should be self-sufficient in all matters of life, spiritually, financially and militarily. An optimum Islamic creed would be a helper, protector and a giver rather than a taker. The Muslims of Kuwait looked upon others as their protectors and their apathy is for all to see. The Muslims in Bosnia and Kosovo had no one to look upon and they got annihilated before NATO came in. Too little too late. The Muslims of Palestine have no friends in the world against Jews. It's all the weakness of Muslims who ceased to be self-sufficient that they are looked upon as barbarians and terrorists instead of the best of the people in manners and ideology. That's why Islam clearly prohibits forming alliance with the Jews, Christians and other non-Muslims. The only alliance a Muslim is allowed to form is with Allah Almighty, our Prophet peace be upon him. When he lived 1,400 years ago, 
and the Muslim believers Islam however clearly prohibits forming alliance with the Jews, Christians and other non-Muslims. The only alliance a Muslim is allowed to form is with Allah Almighty, our Prophet peace be upon him, when he lived 1400 years ago, and the Muslim believers. What does the Bible say about taking disbelievers as friends? Do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. For what partnership has righteousness with lawlessness? Or what fellowship has light with darkness? What accord has Christ with Belial? Or what portion does a believer share with an unbeliever? If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not receive him into your house or give him any greeting, for whoever greets him takes part in his wicked works.